with a twice to beat advantage, the Ateneo Blue Eagles. At guard, number five, Maki Escalona. Forward, number 17, Chris Chu. Center, number 10, Martin Kimson. At forward, number 18, Doug Kramer. And at forward, number seven, JC Indal. Head coach of the Blue Eagles, Norman Black. And now, starting with a squad for the first time in the final four, the Adamson Falcons. At guard number 14, Marvin Poloyapoy. Guard number nine, Patrick Campajo. Center number 19, Ken Bono. Forward number 20, Aaron Basilio. And at forward number 13, Mark Agustin. Head coach of the Falcons, Leo Austria. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the UAAP Season 69, the final four. Yep. That is the big ticket, ladies and gentlemen, the starting five for both teams. This the big is ticket is the UAP one, the here at the battle. Araneta Coliseum. And the Blue Eagles, the Falcons, the birdcage is called the Araneta Coliseum. Cause for concern for the Ateneo fans, Chris Chu, their starting two guard, wearing the facial mask and News has it that uh, he's suffered a blow Zion Lotaris elbow in practice. And uh, he will use that as protection for today's ball game. We'll get a full report later on about Chris Chu's condition. But this will be the matchup. Ateneo and Adamson, and the only clear advantage that Ateneo has going into this game, Ryan, is the twi twice to beat advantage. Because when you look at the numbers, you know, ibang laro, iba yung advantage, ibang eskwela. Hindi yung may pattern dito sa dalawang uh, lap, lap, lap na to. We have to consider also the first two games, only one point separating these two teams. Of course, Ateneo winning the first two, but Adamson could have won that game in the first two games, but uh, Lady Luck did not smile on uh, their side that time. But right now, it's very important for them, of course, to win, to live another day and fight for that final slot. The first offensive rebound going to the leading MVP candidate, Ken Bono, and that is a cause for concern for Ateneo. It has been their downfall in the two losses that they've suffered against USD and against UE. They gave up so many offensive rebounds. Now, Ken Bono starting it off here in the Final Four. Who and how do you stop or limit the guy? Well, for one, it's hard to defend him on a single coverage, meaning he just occupies too much space and he knows how to put himself inside the paint. So Kimson really has his work cut out for him defensively. But on the other end, Kimson also has to make Bono work on defense for Bono to tire out and probably be more or be less effective on the offensive end. And we will see a lot of faces that will be guarding Ken Bono. That right. will not only be Martin Kinson, you will see Zion Nader, you will see Raba Alusaini, that's for sure. And speaking of the Ateneo, let's go to Leah Cruz for a full first report. Thank you, Boom. Now, right now, I'm going to answer the question that is on everyone's minds. Why is Chris Chu wearing a mask today? Well, it turns out, just as he said, Boom, that he got hit across the face earlier this week in practice and that he's merely wearing this mask for protection. But there's no need to worry. It's nothing serious. He should make a complete recovery by the next game. Now, Ateneo has beefed up their game plan. They will be playing more physical and more aggressive. In fact, Coach Norman Black mentioned that the team today that plays more aggressive will win. Everything that Ateneo does today will be to make Adamson run time off their clock. Rebounding is extremely important, and they are looking for deflections and interceptions instead of steals. No steals equals no fouls. In addition, Ken Barak also is back on the bench today after being confined for Dengue. He's actually lost as much as 15 pounds, so we'll see if he can still play this season. Back to you, Thank Thank you very much, Leah. Four to zero, no steals, but yet no points still for Ateneo, and they've gone to their bread and butter play in Ken Bono, trying to create, not necessarily score points, but create opportunities for other players, just like what happened there in Patrick Cabal scoring the fourth point, and another offensive rebound, Ryan. That's right. A defensive uh, adjustment on the part of Coach Norman Black, or it might even be his game plan. As soon as the ball was dumped inside to Ken Bono, 
there were at least two men trying to post, trying to double team him. So that left uh, Patrick Abaug open for a nice penetration. And that is also one of the problems for Ateneo. Since they double, they did not have a good man to block out the offensive rebounders of Adamson. So right now, they really have to make a decision, although it's very early here in our ballgame. First point for Ateneo. They're on the board. 4-1 to one is our score with 7.48 remaining. They go down to get Bona right away. 17 second shot clock, Kramer at single coverage against Kent. Kent with the up and under move. Everything starts inside the post. That is obviously the plan of Coach Leo Austria. And right now, Ateneo, they do not have an answer. Six points right now for the Adamson University. Will Ateneo attempt to speed up the game today, Ryan? Well, that might be another ploy for just for the physical health of, of uh, Ken Bono because he really extends a lot of energy because of uh, that. Look at that. Every time they execute their half-court offense, Ken Bono touches that level. And Ken Bono is up to the task as Basilio with a third offensive rebound of the ball game. Let's go to Jamaica De La Cruz for the Falcons. Thanks a lot, Ruben. The third time's a charm, they say, and let's hope that save holds true today with the Adams and Soaring Falcons. Go against the Ateneo Blue Eagles, yes, for the third time. Their last two encounters ended up in heartbreaking one-point losses, and Adams and Coach Leoster believes this is because the boys were not used to crunch time situations. The Falcons showed they could pull it off during that do-or-die game against NU, though, so he hopes their newfound maturity will shine through today. The boys are hungry to beat Ateneo, and they're also looking to repay Coach Leo for all he has done for the team. What he asks for them today is to give complete focus to the game and play like they mean it. We even had two whole minutes in complete darkness back in the dugout just to visualize today's battle. Boom. Thank you very much, Jamaica. They're definitely on a mission. Talking about Adamson University, they're not here just to be a puppet and to just weigh on the wayside of, uh, of uh, the Ateneo Blue Eagles. They're here to challenge them and they might even spring uh, a a victory that will extend this series to a do-or-die match on Thursday. Now, Martin Kibson now moves out. Ford Ada will be one of the guys who will try to cover Ken Bono. Poleapo, he goes back to Bono from around 15. Money in the bank, baby. That's what makes Ken Bono a legitimate threat on offense. He can play you back in the basket. He can step out and shoot that perimeter jumper. The defense really is guessing right now on how to stop. Ken Bonin on the offensive end. Ateneo seems like they're getting uh, not their usual shots or uh, low percentage shots, if I may say so. One thing, Eagle Ryan, and all the Ateneo as Marvin Poloyapo hounded by Maki as Colonna called for the first offensive foul on the ball game. Now, Adamson is the reason why they're here in the final four for the very first time is they don't turn the ball That's over. right. I think I mentioned that earlier, only 10 turnovers per ball game for this Adamson Falcon. So you know, yeah, only average, as you mentioned, 10. They only have one so far in this first quarter, but the rebounding also. Another cause for concern, as we mentioned earlier, from Ateneo. Nakakain yung kanilang rebounds. That's right, majority of those coming from the offensive end for the Adamson Falcons. And uh, four to be exact out of the... Four six of the six uh, rebounds earlier, and out of the four offensive rebounds, he scored on six points. So, so napaka delicado yun dahil uh, every time somebody takes a shot, you get second draft opportunity. The shooters will have confidence in taking those shots from the outside. Speaking of confidence, uh, Ryan, will the confidence of Chris be bothered with this facial mask as protection? It it does not hamper your eyesight, but psychologically, what does it do to you? Obviously, there will be a distraction because he's not used to wearing that mask. We all know that he's a shooter from beyond the arc, from the perimeter, but the problem is he might not yet be uh, used to it right now because my, my, my uh, thinking is he has just wore, wore that in the last two days, so might not be enough time for him to uh, really adjust. adjust to it. That's right. That's Bono misses. But you will give him that. It doesn't matter. Coach Leo will go to him continuously and slow down this game. In the meantime, they're on the run. Three on two. Marvin goes to Patrick and Ford Arrow breaking up that play. Mackey against Basilio. Sidestep goes up against Bono. Bono gets the retrieval. Good attempt by Mackey. Just came up a bit short. Well, the shot selection, obviously. Coach Norman Black was not happy with that because there were. Four blue shirts and only Maki Ascolona there wearing the Ateneo jersey. And uh, 
Just like what happened after he missed that shot, the defensive rebound for the Adamson Falcons. Marvin Agustin, remember, Adamson doesn't have Leo Canuda anymore. He is recovering from his elbow injury and will miss the season, regardless of whether the season ends today for Adamson or if they extend it to Thursday or if they make it straight to the finals. Coach Leo Austria is ahead. Adamson, so they, uh, that did the trick also for Ateneo. Now, Chris Chu called for a second personal foul. You see, this is where that mask comes in. You Mentally, you get distracted, not only in terms of firing your shots or setting up plays, but sometimes your awareness on the court because your focus is so much on, let's say, your, your new facial mask or maybe your new your knee uh, yeah, protection. Right. You back again, no, coach? And, uh, there will definitely be a distraction and uh, as to what extent hindi talaga natin masabi. Yes. Pero usually kasi yan, I've had players before who wore the same mask and sinasabi ko sa kanila even sa pagtulog nyo, isuot nyo yan para lang lumapat sa mga mukha ninyo. That's an excellent point. Excellent advice. <laughs> Makakuha nga ng isa. Masubukan lang. Pero kailangan, eh, matamaan yung ilong mo muna. <laughs> Nakakatakot yung exchange. 10 to 4 is our score. And again, a slow start for Ateneo. They are out-rebounded by 7 in the early goings of this game. 9 to 2 as Cabao knocks down Eric the second free throw. Eric Salaman two. coming into the ball game, And out of the ball 9 of Adam Adamson Patrick rebounds, Cabal. 5 already for Ken Bono. Well, I do not see the usual fluidity of the execution for Ateneo. One is that they cannot run and score in transition because they cannot color the defensive rebounds. The other thing, every time they execute their offense, they have not been executing it so well. Of course, Coach Norman Black holding a timeout, trying to uh, execute one good play. And nice top pick and roll play by Mackey Colonna. He did not have a vision for an extra pass, but he had a good penetrating angle. That's why he attacked it. Only the sixth point for the Ateneo Blue Eagles. 325 remaining. 11 to 6 is the score. Bono again forces his way through and gets it up and in with a foul. Who will stop the rampaging Ken Bono, who is having the best season of his UAAP career? Look at this drop step move on Ford Otto, creating space for himself. Body control puts it up and in. And the chance of MVP for the Ilo Ilo native. His game has definitely improved because of the arrival of uh, Coach Leo Austria. Who, who is a master in slow down basketball. That's right. And of course, he likes it because every time they execute their offense, he touches that ball. So he gets better grip, he gets better leverage of the leather, and uh, he gets more confident every time. He touches that ball, not only on his shooting, but also in his decision-making, specifically passing or attacking the defender. And right now, he already has nine out of the 14 points here for the Falcons. Five rebounds as Fornano drops one in the bucket. And the lead is still six for Adamson, and three minutes to play here in the opening quarter on the first game in our final four as postseason action begins live on Studio 23. Salamat on Paul Gonzalgo has come up big as of late for Adamson in the absence of Leo Canudai. Arnold Basilio, who starts in place of Roel Lugnatan here in this ballgame. Yun yung surprise netong dalawa coach. Roel Lugnatan, who has played an incredible year for Adamson, does not start today. And also Martin Kimson starting today for coach Norman Black. Anjan si Roel, nandun sa dulo. Ayan. But Kimson's presence obviously is for defensive. Uh, defensive purposes. But unfortunately, he was able, not able to put the cuffs on uh, Ken Bono. In fact, Ken Bono, when he saw Kimson guarding him, definitely had so much confidence in his uh, points of attack. Aro trying to do the same. The up and under move fades away. That short Bono gets his sixth rebound of the ball game. 2.15 remaining. The lead is still six. Adamson sharply shooting from the field. Six out of 11 between Bono and Cabao. The rest of the team, though, only two of them so far. None take, none made, rather. Poloyapoy, the third member of that triumvirate. The save goes to Gonzalo. 
And picked up by Gintan. Gintan, three on two. Aro off the glass. Still no go. A very tentative transition game for Ateneo on the secondary break, Ryan. In the last two minutes, Fourth Ara was taking, has taken three attempts already. So definitely uh, not in the usual uh, offensive the flow coach Norman Black. But of course, it's always nice to get your uh, guys, uh, get their confidence as early as the first quarter. But that might take away some of the shots from the legitimate offensive options of Coach Norman. So as far as I'm concerned right now, Intal should take majority of the shots for Ateneo because he's shooting close to 45% in the last four games for the white shirts. Second personal foul on Mark Agustin. Two personal fouls on Chris Chu. JC Antal looks at the clock and reads nine on the 24. JC puts up the step and is blocked and fouled by Arnold Basilio. That's more like it. JC Antal oh, getting an isolation play on top, beating his man off the dribble. And the help side defender cannot do anything because when JC Antal gets his leverage, he will just soar on the way for that layup. And right now, two free throws will be given to JC. Still yet to score here in this ball game. This is what we've not seen so far in the game. Ateneo constantly attacking that interior defense of Adamson University. It's very important for Ateneo not to be happy with those perimeter jumpers, even if they knocked it in early. I saw Ford Arau yes. knock it in from the Doug outside. Kramer. Doug Kramer knock it in from the outside. But it will not make Ken Bono work on defense. So Ken Bono will have enough energy to do his thing on, on the defensive other side. End. Excellent point. 30% shooting for Ateneo at 3 out of 10. 43 for Adamson at 6 of 14 with the 125 mark of our first quarter. Mike Young is now in the ball game. Mackie Escalona left behind. Young tentative on that one. Bono from the elbow. The rebound again going down to Adamson, but take it away. A scramble play, and this is final four action. The ball and the possession important in every sequence. Let's look at that piece of action. Both teams needing a little grip on that ball. So again, Adamson with a second opportunity with a minute to play. And Young puts it up. That rims out and a rebound sent to Mati Escalona. Mike Young tries to break up the play. They send it to Al Husseini, the easy up there on the move. That's the advantage of Al Husseini. He has to outrun his defender because the big guys of Adamson really is not that uh, heavy or not that uh, complete as far as uh, rotation is concerned. So they have oh. to tie around those big men. Oh, nice pick by Ford Otto. Atene on the run, JC will fly. Tentative on the move because he saw Paul Gonzago underneath. Nailang, Ryan. Oh, he did not agad yung kanyang lalandingan instead of the target, which should be the road goal. So a botched play for Ateneo's Mike Young. Gives it to Paul Gonzago. Fades away, off the mark. Ateneo again with seven seconds on the shot clock or on the game clock for the first quarter. They give it up. Mackey puts it up just in the nick of time, and that will not bite. And Ateneo starts off really slow but recovers just in time to cut the deficit to three at 14 to 11. But Ken Bono, a man on a mission. Moon to one and all. We are happy to have you with us live from the Big Dome for final four action between Ateneo and Adamson. Later on, it will be UE against USD. Another, another nail biter of a match later on. In the meantime, second quarter is underway. Boom Gonzalez together with the smiling and amused coach, <laughs> Ryan Gregorio. Well, this is the time for Ateneo to make their move. No Ken Bono inside. And uh, Alusene can just really score at will because there's no defender who can defend him. So Alusene, as if on cue, scores the first two points here for the Blue Eagles. And Roel Ognatan finally comes in for Coach Leo Austria. Let's see if that will affect this game, Ryan. You know how some players get so affected by the fact that they don't start a ball game? Right. So let's see if Roel Ognatan Gets affected by that. And that uh, Pacheco, twinner, Ryan, is the first player to score for Adamson outside Bono and Cabahu. It's important for Coach Leo Austria's words. Yes. For him 
other scorers, not yes. just Patrick, not just Ken Bono. And uh, a little different in the defensive alignment for Coach Norman is now starting the second quarter with a 2-3 zone defense. Oh. Oops. Eric Salama takes it away, plays the passing lane, and he goes up. And here's a guy who is never afraid to get the contact, try to finish. He doesn't look underneath, he doesn't look at the side, not to say that he doesn't see <laughs> what's at the side. You don't need to look to see what's on your side. And this guy's made a stern stuff, Eric Salamat. That's right, he's very, very smooth. I've seen him a lot of times, and... Uh, Junior's uh, MVP, right? He's very uh, dependable from the free throw area, and uh, when times na medyo na mong problema si Coach Norman sa composure ng kanilang mga players. Pinapasok na itong si Eric Salamat and most of the time talagang uh, Eric Salamat delivers the goods here. So atin na yun, exactly. He, he has been a steady hand from the bench whether it's offensively or defensively or just making up, making scrappy plays. Eric Salamat with this free throw, gives it a 9-2 run, gives Ateneo, or provides Ateneo with a 9-2 run since the 3-19 mark of the first quarter. And for the very first time, we are tied at 16, and that might be broken with this free throw. So now we are officially at our first deadlock of the ballgame. So Coach Leo sends Ken Bono okay. back into play right away. That's right, not even two minutes rest here for Ken Bono. And uh, again, back to man-to-man. Uh, -man. So, uh, Different defensive schemes here being uh, shown by Coach Norman Black. Ken Bono trying to bully his way. And Doug Kramer using a little bit of his legs in that defensive sequence. He just cannot stop Ken Bono on one-on-one -on -one defense, even if you're as big and as strong as Doug Kramer. Let's go and toss it over to Leah Cruz for the Blue Eagles right now. Thank you, Boom. Hang in there and keep playing defense. That's what Coach Norman Black told this boys going into the second quarter. He also reminded them to keep rebounding the basketball as well as to play tough and play team defense. Wait for your teammates. You cannot do this by yourself. It does not work that way. Back to you, Boom. Thank you very much. The rebounding part is really something that Coach Norman Black is trying to emphasize. Mackey puts it up. Oh, a rare offensive rebound by Ateneo to start off the second quarter. Doug Kramer, who has averaged double-double in both games against Adamson. He is averaging 12 points and 11.5 rebounds in those two games, and that's good for his confidence, Ryan. Well, it's very important for Doug Kramer to attack the offensive end because Ken Bono just relies on yeah. his talent, just relies on his weight that just because of his mere weight, he can occupy space. Nobody gets uh, the offensive rebound, but because of uh, Doug Kramer being active, here inside the paint, he will get a lot of opportunities on second chance basket. That's the sixth offensive rebound for Ateneo. Five in the first quarter as Jai Reyes and JC and Tal re-enter the fray. Poloyapoy takes the contact and kisses it off the glass. That's a pretty experienced move there for uh, Poloyapoy. First, he uh, got the body first of uh, Jai Reyes for Jai Reyes to be off balance uh, while defending him. So nice finish there for Right. Nakapapasok lamang. Salamat puts it up. And in! Eric Salamat off the bench, providing a little spark for the Blue Eagles. Three points for Eric Salamat. The lead shifting to Ateneo once again. 20 to 18. Seven minutes and loose change remaining here in the second quarter. Ken Bono. Joel Lugnata on top of the circle. And look at Marvin Poloyapoy trying to post up Jai Reyes. Best imagine. As if he's uh, that tall. <laughs> Why not? There's that chance. As Eric Salamat uses the roadblock provided by Al Hussaini. And up and over Ken Bono. As Ateneo is shooting four out of five here in the second quarter. But Adamson not too bad. Two out of three in the second canto. Under seven remaining. They go to Kabahu. Kabahu and Bono. Playing the outside, and it's Poloyapoy playing the inside, fading away. Oh, that's right. They might have planned this during the practices. Coach Leo Austria just bouncing on this matches right now with smart play and smart points of attack here for Adamson. Again, that's classic Coach Leo yes. Austria coaching, no? JC trying to make room for himself. Turns around, puts it up and in. 
It has become a dogfight here in the second quarter. 22 to 20, 622 remaining. The second quarter is a little more interesting in terms of the scoring now for both teams as they've only missed one field goal apiece. Five out of six for Ateneo, four out of five for Adamson. That one was a denial by Raba Al Husseini though. JC looking to bounce. Side steps, goes out to Jai Reyes, and that another tentative move by JC and Bali. He seems to be not committed to his moves today, right? He only has three points across his name right now and a lot of turnovers. But here, at least, he gave them the lead with this turnaround, which has really developed today, or this year, rather, seasons are certain here in the second quarter. Apeneo forcing a lot of turnovers, pretty unlikely with the way Adamson has been uh, taking care of that nether here the entire season, but right now they're close to turnovers already. And a lot of fast break over to this count. Another turnover here for Adamson. Miscommunication uh, between Marvin Poleapoy and Ken Bono. So the first quarter went to Adamson. Two. Definitely here in the second quarter. It's all Ateneo. The rhythm is a lot better for them, and the tempo pretty much on the side of the Ateneo. And the leaders. crowd is now getting into it for Ateneo. That is the fourth turnover for Adamson in the quarter. Right. So, walo na yan, lahat lahat. And remember, you pointed it out as we look at our cannon power shot fast break courtesy of JC and Tal. You pointed it out. 10 turnovers a game for Adamson, so that's a danger sign, Ryan, as now Ateneo takes a six-point lead. 26 to 20 and under five minutes remaining and scoring has definitely picked up here, Ryan. That's right, and uh, that is... Uh, the importance of a, having a Maki Escalona because Escalona has the ability to create and uh, he leads fast break opportunities here for Ateneo and on the half court sets he breaks down the defense, breaks in and dish off nice passes to his open teammates. Escalona again with a teardrop! Hello! 28-22, six points for Maki Escalona. Against Marvin Poloyapoy, Adamson making it to the final four for the very first time in its school history. And speaking of which, let's go to Jamaica de la Cruz. This is an ordinary game with bigger words, Coach Leo Ashley says, so there should be no pressure, but they should still play hard. They have to play with determination, desire, and intensity to win. And instructions are to challenge shots, make it really, really difficult for the Ateneans today. He told the boys to be fearless in attacking, avoid broken plays because it doesn't give solid points, and to stick to the play as much as possible. Thank you very much, Jamaica. 28-22 is our score. 4-12 four four remaining here in the second quarter. An offensive foul by Eric Salama. Turnover for Ateneo. Patrick Abal, JC Ital. Now in the ball game for Adamson University is Alan Santos. Cabal puts it up and in and gets it to go. That's a very important shot for Patrick Cabajo. The reason being is because the one who's guarding the passer is always saggy. Ken Bono cannot get a good touch inside. So now with that shot, the defense will be a little more decent. But Matias Colonna is burning here in the second quarter. It's time, it's final four time, and it's time for the players to step up and put on their A game, and Maki Escalona finds his range, Patrick Abal finds his range too, and they're answering each other with long bombs at the 323 mark. First, the Sun Cellular 3, better network, better value courtesy of Patrick Abal, who is shooting 32.5% from beyond the arc. And what about Maki Escalona answering with a long two, shooting four out of seven from the field. A foul goal called on Raba al Husseini, which sends Marvin Poleapoy on the line for free throws. Ken Bono back in the game, started off with a huge nine-point performance in the first quarter, but nothing here in the second for Ken Bono. Well, the difference between the first quarter and the second quarter here for Adamson is that in the first quarter, they were really looking for Ken Bono. But in the second quarter, defense, of course, adjusted. And uh, it seemed like uh, it was a little difficult for Adamson passers to dump the ball inside again. JC Amtal with a dipsy-do move. Nothing there. As Mark Augustin takes the retrieval. 
Three minutes loose change remaining in our first half. Final four actions between Athena and Adamson. They're trying to go to Kabal with a mismatch against Derek Salamat. Kabal gets possession. Seven on the shot clock fades away. He is now four out of eight from the field. And the ball will go to the Blue Eagles. Action. Yes, Darlene. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, beside uh, Gilbert Rimulia, Congresswoman uh, Darlene Custodio. There you go. Antonino Custodio. There you go. Thank you very much. Joining us, part of the celebrity crowd that That's we right. have here. That includes Ryan Gregorio, of course. <laughs> Boom Gonzalez. 2.32 <laughs> remaining. Rich Alvarez also joining us, cheering on his alma mater who are in the lead by three at 30, 27. Ken Bono has not touched the ball, no one them in the second quarter after scoring nine points in the first. And an illegal pick provided by Ken, make, make that Doug Kramer. Second personal foul. And we all know the <laughs> Mr. Rick Gordon, of course, I don't think Gordon a staunch supporter of Ateneo, not agreeing with that call. 2.15 remaining. Adamson's offense has stalled. No assists. Kasamang Raya dito sa ating second quarter. First touch for Ken Bono. And another offensive rebound. Kabaho for three. But they get it to go. First he got an offensive rebound. Stepped back and shot a three. And got a foul to boot. Jason Dahl was called for that foul and a chance for a rare four-point play here for Patrick Abahu. He is two out of four from beyond the arc, lines it up with a Sun Cellular three, better network, better value, and he sends that baby home. Will get a bonus prize with a free throw after the JC and Dahl foul. He is five out of nine ball from the field ball right ball now, ball and we are ball all knotted up again at 30 all. Two minutes to play. Coach Norma Black just cannot shake this Adamson Falcon team. Adamson is obviously working harder than Ateneo. They have a lot to lose here if they drop their ball game. So Coach Norman at this point, one of the things that he will definitely remind his players during the halftime break would be blackout, get defensive rebounds, limit. The Adamson Falcons only one shot. We've talked about Maki Escalona here exploding in the second quarter. In, in the assist department, he already has six compared to Adamson's two. Escalona missing from afar. 139, the lead with Adamson. And it makes you wonder what is wrong with Ruel Ugnata. He's not playing extended minutes that's here. Correct. You know that's not normal, Ryan. That's right. He's one of the aces for uh, Coach Leo Austria. The foul misses and a foul called away from the ball. It is Alan Santos called for the foul. Although Eric Salamat and Patrick Cabal had something to say. And you know it is final four. And a foul is, oh, wait a minute. They're, there's a push away from the action when the referees have already separated the players. I didn't see it, Ryan. I didn't see it. I only saw the reaction of Eric Salamat. That's right. Eric Salamat was a little uh, relaxed going to their uh, front court when Gonzalo just came in and showed Eric Salamat away from play. So let's see what the referees are going to call as Coach Norman protesting. Here's that shot. Ito yung kanina pa. Yeah, yung, yung foul ni Alan Santos. Ito yung, yung nagkasabit si Yong at saka si Salamat kanina yan. Yung naglalakad sila, okay na eh. Napasify na eh. And out of nowhere, Gonzalo comes in and gives uh, Eric Salamat a little uh, nudge. Re reminder <laughs> that it is the final four. That's right. Definitely, emotions are a little uh, higher in situations like this. Final four is not for softies, right? That's right. Just Just Eric Salamat, of course, is just a rookie here in uh, this uh, season, but uh, he plays like a veteran. Tinawagan ng technical si Gonzalo. That's a good call by the referee. They're trying to maintain control. To break, right, right. Uh, maintain control here in this ball game. Second motion, yung tinawag ng technical. Uh, Paul Gonzalo for Adamson. Now the lead 
or we're tied at 31. The last nine points of Adamson Ryan has come from Patrick Cabal, so it's really caught fire here in the absence of Ken Bono's offense. So the reason why Ken Bono is not getting a lot of uh, baskets here in the second quarter is because he's not getting a lot of touches as well. They go down. Rava Alusaini misses the turnaround jump hook. Gonzalo picks up a little speed, but he drops out. They go to the hot hand of Patrick Cabal. Cabal fades away in the last 11 points of an Adamson coming from the man that we talked about in pregame, Ryan, who's got to have his game going. If Ken Bono needs or wants to sustain his inside game, they need Patrick Cabal as another the, score. The very explosive start of Ken Bono made the defense adjust to Ken Bono only here in the second quarter, and that left Patrick Cabal get a little more open shots, and uh, Atene is definitely paying dearly for it with Patrick about scoring nine or 11. The last 11 points, look at that. That's awesome. Up and under move in the elbow area. He puts it down for the two point lead, 33 to 31. Two lead changes, four deadlocks. And JC and Tal trying to forge another one. Via the 15th parallel line, we are down to 39 seconds here in the first half. JC Intal with seven points and eight rebounds. Torrey make that six rebounds. He misses the second free throw. So we have time for around a couple of plays, Ryan, here in the first half. Barring any hitch, of course. 10 on the 24. Gonzalo against Intal. Denied, but foul. Aggression and intensity and persistence will get you something, something. That's right, that's a good point. He drove to the basket. He was really looking for an inside pass to Ken Bono, but the post pass was uh, denied. So what he did was he attacked the basket, was able to fish a big foul, a big uh, fish at that. In, uh, Second personal. Second personal. And the vociferous protest of Raba al Husseini as Zion Latere comes in for Ateneo, who are not in the lead right now. Chris Drew on your screens, bothered by that mask, possibly. 20 seconds remaining with Adamson holding on to a two-point lead. And another chance for Adamson. Another crack at that basket. Hussaini was called for the last touch, and Adamson can go for the last crack of the basket. Gonzalo sets up Bono. Ten on the game clock. Overshoots. Santos puts it up. The ball tap goes to Fordano. They have three seconds. Maggie looks up, and Adamson picks up the ball. And that will do it for our first half. And this loud of Coach Norman Black has come across the floor and goes to the referees and is now restrained by team manager Paulo Trillo protesting the non-call on Matias Colonna earlier. The score will stick. It is 34-32. Time now for our Nokia best play of the quarter as everything goes awry here at the Araneta so far. Here comes Maki Escalona, the man who made it happen in the second quarter, Ryan, dishing it off to Raba al -Husseini for the deuce. That is our Nokia best play of the quarter, and now Coach Norman talking to Commissioner's Row. We'll give you an update later on. Ladies and gentlemen, it is definite. We are experiencing final four intensity here at the Big Dome. Adamson holding on to a two-point lead, 34-32. Point two. Nine points, eight point two rebounds for Roel Ugnatan. But it is looking good though that even without Roel Ugnatan on the floor, they are in the lead by two, 34 32. 34 32. Cause for concern though for Ateneo. The calls are getting to their heads, Ryan. 
they have to keep their composure. Of course, it always starts from uh, the head coach, but somehow at the end of uh, the second quarter, medyo nawalan ng uh, composure si Coach Norman Black because he deemed like it was a non-call, which should have been called by the ref. But uh, right now, it's over and done with. This is already the second half. They can still come back here. It's just a two-point deficit, so they just have to execute well and think about defensive stops every time they have an opportunity. But Ryan, we are going to start the second half with a technical foul, oh, all right. which was called on Coach Norman Black prior to uh, the end of our first half as the referees now make their way into the ball game to the jeers from the predominantly Ateneo crowd here. But as we said, officially it is a technical foul called on Coach Norman, so free throws will start our second half. Later on, it will still be UE and USD. Oh, that's a doozy. That will be with Eric Tipan and uh, Ronnie Monsano. That's uh, happening in the second game of our Sunday showdown. In the meantime, the referees will call the captains for both teams. As we mentioned, Final four comes around, emotions <laughs> run even higher. You know, in the UAB from the start of the season, but oh, yes. the emotional play, but it just goes up a notch, if not a couple of notches, when final four swings around. But for Ateneo, of course, they are expected to win against Adamson here in this ball game because of their 10-2 uh, standings. While on the other hand, Adamson, after 13 years, finally making it here in our final since uh, uh, the arrival of Coach Leo Austria. All right, let's go to Leah Cruz and get a report. I'm sure it wasn't pretty in the locker room at halftime, Leah. Thank you, Boom. Now it was actually a lot calmer than I anticipated in the dugout. The coaching staff has calmed down and the players themselves were pumping each other up. A dog fight is what Coach Thomas Black called this game. And he reminded his boys to get to the foul line, take it strong to the basket, and not get into any early foul trouble despite whatever the calls are made. Coach Arnold Black also wants intensity from the very start. We will find out today what we are made of. Back to you, Boone. That's an excellent point, you know. As we mentioned, you've got to rise above That's right. the calls. The coach will take care of it, the staff will take care of it. As players, you have to refocus and channel that intensity into the ball game and into the execution of your game plan. But for Coach Norman Black, I've seen him, I've uh, analyzed his uh, coaching staff. This might even be a ploy for him to make his work. Probably, yes. <laughs> As we, too smart a coach. as we finally start our second half, Ken Bono one out of two for the technical free throws. And a, almost a turnover, yes, a completed turnover, the 10th turnover for Adamson to start this campaign. Now, we mentioned this in the last matchup between Ateneo and Adamson. There is an ongoing streak of nine years that Adamson has not beat Ateneo. 18 straight games. This is that 19th game. Will this be the lucky charm for Adamson? But they have to beat Ateneo twice to make it to the finals. But it all starts today and JC and Tal says no. We're not done yet. The lead is won for Adamson. It is crucial for both teams to start off strong here in the second half, right? That's right. In the second quarter, it was really Ateneo start really, started really, really strong. And now two straight turnovers here for the Falcons. JC popping out, resets, gets inside into traffic, comes up short. Second opportunity for Ateneo on the nine-minute mark of our third quarter. Chris Chu tees up the three, gets it to go! It's a wide open shot. We've been talking about the destruction brought about by that face mask, but obviously here in the third quarter, there were no destructions as evidenced by that three point shot by Chris Chu. That's his first field goal, folks. One out of two for Chris Chu from beyond the arc, and the Ateneo crowd is something alive. Three turnovers for Adamson to start off the second half. Doug Kramer attacks Ken Bono. Rabba Alusaini goes up and it gets fouled by Arnold Basilio. And now Ateneo in the lead, 37-35. Free throws will be given as we review what happened. You know, Chris Jew was open all day. He was just waiting. He tees up the three, sends that baby home for a Sun Cellular three. Better network, better value. Chris Jew, a reliable shooter. How about 40% from that area? It's just stroke. So even if he has those uh, face masks, he sometimes it's just really the 
the stroke, the rhythm of that shot. He was wide open and uh, just a mere blunder on the uh, defensive rotation for Coach Leo Austria. Really, he paid dear before that. And yes, the lead swings like an arrow, and it's at 4, 39, 35, 8 minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the third. Chris Chu and Marvin Palayapoy. They have forced three turnovers so far. Only one player touching the ball in that sequence, Ryan. Not even going through Ken Bono, and that should be a problem for the Falcons. Let's go to Jamaica right now. Things are really heating up inside and outside of the court, but the coaches are reminding the boys to just focus on their game and not be affected by the racuous crowd. Coach Leo wants the Falcons to take advantage of these semi-favorable circumstances and to keep playing well without the first half lapses. That means less turnovers, which we weren't able to do, I think, in the first minutes, faster certain backs, and more concentration. The Falcons are all fired up now, with some ruffled feathers adding up to their wary determination to win this game. Boom. Thank you very much, Jamaica. Doug Kramer called for his third personal foul, setting up another illegal screen. That is the second time he has done that. But at least defense is picked up here for Ateneo. No execution to talk about here for Atenea because of the pressure defense that they have employed. They're pressuring the ball carrier and they're denying uh, the first pass. And Ken Bono has not really touched the ball. This is the first time he to touch this ball. And it's always a good sign when he does. He creates something either for himself or for other persons. That's right, but a little gamble at the part of Doug Kramer. He tried to go for that steal. That's why he just took one shot from the outside for Chris Chu to get this game back, especially from beyond the arc. Chris Chu is stroking it and putting it down and has provided the spark early on and is early on in the third, 41-37 is our score. Four not all for Doc Kramer. And another turnover for Adamson Ryan. Four turnovers here in the third quarter as a lot of shoving is going around. Well, that was a crazy pass on the part of Marvin Poloyapo. Ugnaton was just trying to run, going to their uh, front court, and all of a sudden, Poloyapo giving off that pass on the head of uh, Ugnaton. So definitely the problem there was on the part of the point guard. That's Pinalitan Kagat ni Coach Leo. Pasok si Mike Young, who will hound Maki Escalona. Escalona. Maneuvering, weaving, putting up a shot, nothing there, and a foul is called on Raba Alusaini, who protests and is called for a technical foul. I think the referee should call that. A third foul and a technical foul, which means a fourth personal foul. Your point, Ryan. Well, Coach Norman Black has definitely made this point for his players to keep their composure, all the uh, rankings and yeah. all the uh, whatever they have in mind just to protest the call will be done by the coaching staff. Here, a loose ball foul was called against uh, Al Husseini. We don't know really, but the referees always has a good vantage point, so a foul was called, but in the ensuing play, Coach Norris even telling Al Husseini to just Take it easy, take it easy, and the frustration really on the part of Coach Norman was because of that technical foul called against Alusini, not towards the ref, but towards this guy right here. And I think that's the reason why they called the captains at halftime to explain that any similar outburst will already mean technicals just right. to be able to control everything that's going on here at the Arenata Coliseum. That's right, especially sometimes you also have to control the temper of the crowd. I saw debris falling earlier here at the end of the second quarter and we just don't need or don't yeah. want situations like that to be Ryan, ako yun. Binato lang kita. Masakit yun. It is a 41 to 39 score with under seven minutes to play. Cabao holding on to that letter with a seven second shot clock. They go to Ken Bono, single coverage. Ford Otto backing down. Ken Bono fading away. And the, goal, the ball goes to JC Intal. Intal leaves Mark Agustin. All the way! The rocket flying once again. 43 49. What an impact play. JC Intal with a crossover move. And is definitely into it. Agustin barges through. But it goes to Ruel Ugnatan with a fresh shot block, and Patrick Cabajo realizes it. He wants the screen. Patrick takes it. Cabajo is fouled by Mackie Escalona on the fly. And it will be called 
Yes, on Naki. That's his second personal. Tinapik niya mula sa likod kasi naiwanan siya. But ito, crossing over first. And the rocket launching. Yun yung crossover na naiwanan si Mark Augustin. And JC, the free lane, just takes it and flushes it down. And now the lead is four. 43-39. Kabao down low at the basement. Easy play for Patrick Kabao. Very controlled. That's the problem from the defense. A little love pass right there. If the defensive guy from the baseline is late on the rotation, that's what you're going to get. Venue for your final four for the 69th season of your UAB. Boom Gonzalez, Brian Gregorio. ABS-CBN Sports covering game number one of our Sunday showdown. Chris Chu stays up in the air, but is denied by Patrick Cabal. 5.36 to play. Third quarter. Adamson trying to force a knockout game on Thursday against number one, Ateneo de Manila. Adamson at number four as Orella, a surprise entry for Coach Leo Austria. That is Jerry Orera knocking it down. That's how important Ken Bono is in this uh, Adamson team. He has to touch the better because often starts with him either on the pass or either on the shot. He gave a good confidence there on that pass to Orera. So again, it is a 45-43 tally. Zion Lader in the ball game. Ken Bono against Ford Ano, and that is a foul on Ford. Trying to pick his pocket. Ken Bono oh, just so confident. He knows he can take on anyone this here in this ball. game right now. He can take on Norman Black probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's just too big. He has good dribbling ability. He can really back his uh, man down. And again, the chance. And it's amazing. I wonder this guy that heavy. Yes. He can run up and down the court. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> 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 A smooth touch from the perimeter and from the free throw line. And now we're tied once again. At 45. Four minutes and 40 seconds to go. JC trying to take on Jerry Orera. Gives up the dribble. They go down to Ford Auto with seven seconds. Kicking it out. Mackey for the three. Off the mark. Tie oh! up from there. Stick back city. That's a nice offensive rebound and a putback out of nowhere, right? That's right. Now the guy has always had hops. A foul call on Chris Chu holding on to Mike Young. That is his third personal. I think uh, as we look at this, he just came out of nowhere, puts it back. And the lead is broken, or the lead, the tie is broken. The lead swings back to Ateneo, 47-45, but Mike Young with a chance to knot it all up again. And that's a problem when you employ that kind of a defense. You're susceptible to making a lot of fouls because you're just uh, trying to hunt that guy, and more often than not, you will be uh, either called for a blocking foul or a hand check foul. And right now, since Ateneo is already in team penalty, succeeding fouls will always merit two free throws. Mackey trying to pick up the pace. Mackey sets up for it. Otto goes to the reverse. Zion trying to keep the ball alive. And that is what he's there for. He's an extra possession guy. He's a guy who will, you know, give you the, the necessary hustle to get an extra possession. Well, the reason why it is very hard for Hugnatan to block out Later is because Later usually comes from the outside and attacks the basket oh. on the way for his offensive rebound. And usually, if he, if uh, Hugnatan is not uh, up to it, meaning he's not quick enough or he's not really ready to put, uh, block out, more often than not, Later will get offensive rebound. And Hugnatan is really not no moving normally, Ryan. He's just not moving normally. He is baby so something. Relaxed. It's so relaxed. I don't want to know, really. We've been talking about him, and uh, I just don't want to talk about him. Parang masyadong nga tamad sa loob ng course. Alam mo, hindi. Hindi, hindi. I've Alam seen him play. Alam mo, may iniinda. In the meantime, it's a brand new shot clock given to Ateneo. I think Ateneo players should stop reacting to the calls and non-calls and let, let, just let the referees officiate. I don't think they're being cheated. Uh, the missed calls of the refs are just uh, 
you already missed once. Six offensive rebounds for Ateneo. A foul is called on Jerry Orrera, who's trying to take the ball away. An elbow was given by Orrera. That's a right call again. It was a second motion. Again, right? oh. It should be. It should be called. Technical? That's yeah. right. It should be called. I think that is how uh, the game should be played. It's, it should be played uh, with uh, emotions, yes, but let's, no, let's look no, at it. no dirty tricks. No That's dirty the foul. Tricks. That's the foul there. And when the referees turn this around. back, Let's see if we catch it. Jerry Herrera, there, swings it. And, and again, it's not a matter of now, in this game, how we're taking it in this context, it's not a matter anymore of how long you swing, how far you swing, how loud you protest. Every single protest, every single swing, right. whether you hit or not, is going to be called as a technical. Right. I think that's what they established at halftime already. That should be called, of course, not just on the side of Ateneo, but also on the kind of side of Ateneo. Oh, so it's yeah. called guidelines. So if you see it on one team, you're not going to favor any team for it. And I'm sure the referees talked about it during the halftime break. Of course, they are uh, being reminded also by our Commissioner Elmer Yanga and Deputy Commissioner uh, Atok Padulano. So... Uh, it's important also for the referees not to be bothered by the fans or not to be bothered by the supporters of, of uh, these two teams. 13 points for JC and Tal. He knocks both free throws for the technical foul on Jerry Orrera. He's still on JC. 16 second shot clock. JC goes to his left. That's a tough shot. And Patrick Abau with the emphatic defensive retrieval. The lead is only three. For Ateneo, 49, 46, with three minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the third. Noelu Knatan, not even asking for the ball. Patrick, a double team on him. This is Ken Bono with another offensive rebound, the second offensive rebound, and Lafayette is there to take it away finally. Escalona to Salamat. Salamat goes to the reverse. He's blocked. And Adamson now on the attack. Mike Young. Waits for backup. There's a mismatch somewhere. And there it is, Patrick against Eric Salaman. Cabajo fades away, but there's a foul ball, and that means free throws for Patrick Cabajo. That's right. So Patrick Cabajo, after exploding for 18 points in the first two quarters, has only scored two points here, but his uh, numbers will definitely increase here after this timeout because of the two free throws which will be awarded here. 49-46 is our score, and it's a again breathing down the necks of Ateneo, behind by two off the missed free throw from Patrick Cabal, 49-47. It is Maki Escalona, JC Ital, Fort Aro, Zion Lader, and Eric Salaman for Coach Norman Black. Zion, uh, not his shot. Not his shot indeed. That is way, the, the, uh, way out from his uh, comfort zone. It's, it's usually just a perimeter. And it's early in the shot clock. Right. right. Cabajo in the elbow area. Bono attempts the three, gets it to go! And the lead swings back to Ateneo de Manila University, the number one MVP candidate. The leading MVP candidate trying to egg on his teammates. They go to Salaman. Thought about it. Draws closer for the medium range jumper. Smart move. Mr. Smooth. He reminds you of Jalen Rose. You must <laughs> tie that big lang. Relax the relax. And now the lead again to Ateneo at 51 50. Four lead changes. And Patrick Abao has found his stroke. He is three out of six from beyond the arc and has scored 22 points. To lead all scorers, Ryan. But Escalona should not be tempted. I think one of the ploys of Coach Norman Black really is just stay home on uh, Patrick Abaug. So Escalona once again. Watch us again. That's off the mark. He got lucky there, but Abaug should never have a decent look from any part of the basketball court because his confidence is losing at this point. This is where they're missing Chris Chu on a normal right. basis because Chris Chu is a stop. Yes, he's a man who loves to stop and guard. The two man of the other team. Cabal fades away. Tough ankle to work with. And Zion picks up the trash. Mackie looking to bounce. No shooters much for Ateneo here. They go to the cutting. Arao, nice play for the guys in white. Nice uh, 
penetration. Nice cut there by uh, Ara and even a uh, better finish for him. One point three. Oh no, we were all tied up. We are off. tied up. Our fifth deadlock with only 20 seconds remaining in the third quarter. This is indeed final four action and a foul call on Alex Salamat, which will mean free throws again given to Adamson University. But I want to see the free throw shooting percentage of the Adamson uh, University boom in the first two quarters. It was eight, six of eight, so still pretty decent from uh, the 15 foot line. That's a Sun Cellular 3, better network, better value as Ken Bono and Patrick Cabao. Look at this, 22 points for Patrick, Ken Bono with 19. The top two stars delivering when it matters right. here in the final four. Could they break that 18 game losing streak against Ateneo? Marvin Poloyapo is thinking his first free throw shot. He has uh, six points across his name. He did not start out well here in the third quarter. He had a lot of turnovers and he missed the second free throw. He is three out of four from the line. You know, when you talk about advantages, you have to think that Ateneo players have the advantage of postseason experience. Remember, this is the first time Adamson has made it this far. Mackey for the long two, nothing there. Salamat will run out of time. And look at that. Adamson University holding on to a one point lead, 54. 53 time now for the Nokia best play of the quarter and it's definitely this JC and Thal's throw down as he dismantles that Adamson defense on his own. We'll give you some interesting uh, quarters and it's very slim, the slimmest of all margins. You know, he's in a sabi, nothing given, nothing taken. 54, 53 as you look at the quarter scoring even in the third quarter, they're all at 21 and 20. Here's my concern now, Ryan, as a casual basketball fan, and you look at experience in the postseason, you want to look at Adamson as a team in the fourth at winning time. Will they be able to pull it off? Will they be oblivious to pressure? Or will they respond to it? Or will they buckle under it? Well, the mindset right now for Adnair should be they have 10 minutes to finish off this Adamson uh, Falcons team. But uh, for Adamson, really, this might just be their last 10 minutes here in uh, the season. So the sense of urgency definitely is still on the side of Adamson. Well, for Ateneo, the reason why uh, at least that medyo kulang pa sa sense of urgency is because they know that at the back of their minds, even if they drop this game, they still have a chance to finish it off because of that twice speed advantage. How about Zion Lothair coming up with five rebounds here in this game in limited minutes. He's really done what he's supposed to do. 10 seconds of the shot clock, nothing evolving on the Ateneo offense. Chris Chu with six. Chris Chu pulls up for the three, it's fouled. Oh no, there's no foul. But he gets it to go from beyond the arc and he is now knocked down. Two three threes, actually, it was, a, it was a long two. I thought the referee called a long three. But I understand really why Coach uh, Norman Black is a little frustrated here because he thought like there should be a foul call against Puyamoy because uh, the landing area of uh, Chris Chu was uh, bothered because of uh, Puyamoy. But after that, take a look at this. This is exactly what I'm talking about. New landing area, that's definitely the space of Chris Chu. We didn't see it here, but Coach Norman Black was still looking for a foul. But right now, after that call, a traveling call. A traveling call was called on Zion Latte. Yes. And uh, a technical foul now is called on the bench of Ateneo. So that's two free throws for Ken Bono. You know, this might be the undoing of Ateneo here. Again, you know, getting affected by... Because this game is so close that anything like that might swing momentum to either team, Ryan. Well, definitely the pressure is on the side of uh, Ateneo right yeah. now because they want to uh, really finish it off. But the mere fact, perspective-wise, Buma, yes. there is, uh, the mere fact that they ended the elimination round at 10-2, and two, which gave them a twice-to-beat advantage, this game should be played like just their normal exactly. game. Exactly. Hindi masyadong pressure, pero ngayon, they're reacting to every place as a result. Nawawala pa yung composure ng mga players. Excellent point. 10 seconds now at the Adamson shot clock. Nice fake by Ken Bono, but nice adjustment by Doug Kramer on the defensive end. 
Mackey tracking down the loose ball. And they will play. Call the play for Chris Chu for the three. He overshoots that one. Ital goes up and puts it up and in. And guess what? Ateneo again back in the lead. 57 56, 7 48 remaining. And Ital, 15 points, 10 rebounds, a double double for the Rocket. The two MVP candidates slugging it out. Ken Bono and JC Ital. Marvin puts it up off the glass. Nothing there. The tap going to Adamson. Bono thought about it. Takes the three. Gets Whoa. it to go. Ken Bono hitting two three point shots here in the second half. He is two out of two from Boomtown, baby. And he gives them another lead at 79. Make that 59 to 57. Mackie Escalona takes it back. And Ardeneo again swings the lead to themselves. 11 lead changes in this ballgame. Patrick Abauga gets back to Escalona. He wants a clear out. Eight seconds. Patrick uses Ken. Patrick from the elbow goes back to Ken. Ken Bono with two seconds. He draws the foul and it will go to the line for free throws. So. Back to back threes here, of course, first. Ken Bonov shaking off his defender. And then making that three point shot. But take and make a Sun Cellular three, better network, better value. He looks at the crowd, but guess what? Vanti Escalona answers with a looper of a three ball, and he shushes the other side of that crowd with that three because he takes the lead with that one. And and now Ken Bono it is 8 out of 10 from the free throw line. Let's go to Jamaica De La Cruz right now. First of all, I'd like to apologize for the silence regarding our players' conditions. I know you've been asking, but they have had a special request for me just to tell you guys that they are all 100%. And how can I refuse, right? Moving into the fourth quarter, nothing has changed. They want to attack Chris True and they want to keep it resilient. Everyone is just bent on doing what we have to do to get this. Boom. Thank you, Jamaica. No need for the apology. We explained at halftime that they didn't want to inform anybody about the true physical condition of Roel Ugnatan. So everybody's fine. That's what we heard. That's so a, that means Ugnatan is just uh, not playing uh, at least the energy level of a Final Four. Ken Bono puts up the three. Go! Go! Ken Bono is on fire. And the lead shifts back to Adamson University, 63-62 on a dog fight here at the Big Dome. Kramer with a long ball! It doesn't get better than this, Ryan. Definitely a well-played offensive game here for both these teams, and they want, of course, for Adamson, the stake is they want to live another day. While for Ateneo, they want to finish it off right here, right now. A turnover and a foul given up by Marvin Poloyapoy, his second personal foul. 18 straight games dating back to 1997, and Ken Bono wants to break the streak held by Ateneo for nine straight years. Doug Kramer, who has been silent all throughout this game, with only six points, two rebounds, answers the three-point shot, but Ken Bono, amazing stroke from beyond the arc. And that expression, just playing foul, called for the offensive foul on Jerry Orrera. He warded off with his right hand just to get a little space because Orrera, of course, his main uh, job here in today's ball game is limit the scoring uh, opportunities of uh, JC and Tal, and uh, that was a nice defensive gem there for Oreda. 64-63. Let's go to Leah Cruz for the Blue Eagles now. Leah? Thank you, Boom. It's all a matter of sticking things out. This is what the boys have been telling each other this fourth quarter. In addition, Coach Sean Black reminded them to stay low, box out and rebound, be aggressive and take it to the basket and execute the plays. It's also important for everyone to stay above the tight calls and keep cool. The boys and the coaching staff have been pacifying each other whenever things heat up. Back to you, Boom. Exactly, Leah. Thank you very much. Cabajo with a teardrop. The looper doesn't bite. And here comes Ital. Fort Otto with a fast break point earlier on Ken Bono. The lead is three for Ateneo. 4.38 remaining in this fourth and final quarter. Chris Chu launches a three. That's overcooked. 
And execution, very important here for the yes. Athens Falcons. Ben Bono trying to get his space once again there. Again, setting a pick and roll for Puleyapa. Again, it is Ateneo with a twice to beat advantage. A win here will propel them to the finals. A win by Adamson will extend this series to Thursday in a knockout match. And there is still UE and USD waiting in the wings. And that's good news for all of you watching us on Studio 23. Coming up on four minutes here in the fourth. Escalona puts it on the floor. On the fly, nothing there. Cabajo comes away with another repossession. Bono and Cabajo, 16 of 36 of the field. The rest of the team, 4 of 15, Ryan. But they all look tuckered out at this point, so yeah. the other guys really must step up and see if they can still score. What a move there by uh, Ken Bono. Ateneo again looking for a traveling violation, but Ken Bono, even if he's tired, there's a red score, 30 points here. And again, Ateneo only up by one point. What a shifty Grabe. move by Ken Bono. Great footwork for this big guy. Maki from 16 finds the touch. And Maki Escalona with 15 points, a triple. And the lead again, back to three, 68-65. 3-10 remaining in this fourth and final quarter. Marvin is just dribbling. The time away here for Adamson. And now they're left with a four-second shot clock. Cabao is covered by Mackey. He puts up a rough shot. Adamson trying to keep it alive. And Jerry Herrera just works hard for the basket. J.P. Herrera hanging around and cleaning up the garbage. 2.40, 68-67, winning time here in the UAAP. Zion Ladell, fourth arrow from the elbow. My big shot. What shooting. What shooting by both teams. They are really stepping up to the plate, Ryan. Fourth arrow. The reason why he's inside is because just to pop a little Ken Bono from the comfort zone. But right now he has four points. Two points coming from a fast break situation for them and two points from the perimeter. Macias Colonna this time will be guilty for that hand check foul. Again, Coach Norman Black cannot believe that call, but of course the call will remain. Not yet in team penalty is this Ateneo University. Team. Look at that move by Ken Bono, the sidestepping move, who gives them or cuts the lead down to one. And then Fort Arau showing the touch oh. from the elbow to give them another three-point lead. 70 to 67. Back to live action here. Doug Kramer is fouled by Mark Agustin. Doug Kramer has been reduced to a non-factor. Not his fault. He has had his hands busy trying to bump and grind right. with Ken Bono here in this game. But for the arrow coming off the bench and giving Coach Norman Black a little, li a little lift from uh, both ends. It was an important layup shot that he made earlier and a much more important uh, perimeter jump. Here we go. Winning time. You know, Ryan, these are two cowboys slinging guns at each other. The question is, who will flinch? Who will flinch? And right now, Adamson takes the ball away. They are behind by three. 140 to play. Everybody and his mother is standing <laughs> up here at the Araneta Coliseum. For Ateneo, win will propel them to the finals. Marvin dribbling away the time. Ay, come on. Turning the ball over. Intal goes up and is blocked, but Kramer puts it up in the air. And a five-point lead, a little breathing space for the Blue Eagles. Nice defensive stop there for Ateneo, but Marvin Poliakoy, six turnovers, Ryan. Has been throwing the ball like crazy here in crunch time. In the meantime, Doug Kramer, just hanging around and picking up the pieces to get them a few seconds away. And they're warming up. They're getting ready for battle. USD, four years, not in the final four. They're back today with Coach Pito Arenzo at the helm. In the meantime, in this game, probably the play of the game. If Adamson loses this one, that Marvin Poloyapoy sixth turnover. Oh, it's not over. <laughs> 
siya. But again, I think you have a legitimate point. Marvin Pulayapoy just dribbling the ball and making that error pass, 100 cross-court pass. It's unthinkable here, especially in these times of uh, the basketball game. How about Patrick oh, yes. Like Just responding to the pressure. Chris Chu now giving it up to Kramer for the long two. And Doug Kramer. That's a big shot. Just stroking it <laughs> in. Averaging 55% from the two-point field. Again with a crucial jumper. 40 seconds remaining. Bono with a teardrop. Doesn't find the mark. And Ateneo gets the rebound and is fouled by Jerry Orrera. 16 turnovers for Adamson. A team that only has a 10 turnover average. But Doug Kramer coming up big with two crucial jumpers that are way beyond you know the usual 15 footers that he knocks down that's right this is really more than academic but uh my point is this is exactly the situation wherein uh, you need a kanuda of course he can't come back because of his injury but the marvin pulayapo is really now in the final 37 seconds of this ball game the one thing that's working for Ateneo coming into the final four, Ryan, is all throughout the season, they have a lot of close games. They have won a lot of close games, and now they have something to go back to in situations like these. 37.7 seconds, a jump ball and a possession arrow points to the Ateneo Blue Eagles. Now, concern here for Adamson, 55 points coming from Bono and Cabajo. 15 only from the rest of the team. Nothing from Roel Ugnatan, who's averaging close to 10 points a ball game. Zero points, zero field goals, and it's been a non-factor also on defense. Now, you say what you want, but you know there's something wrong with the guy. And, you know, even if you, if they, if they lose today, you won't be able to prepare That's for right. anything or any other game. So, right. unfortunate for Adamson that Roel Ugnatan is hit with something physically. And I, I'm assuming this, I'm speculating, right. only because of how we observe, we're observing. That's right. And for those of you who tuned in late, we're only speculating because Adamson doesn't want to tell us also the real reason, right. which you can't blame them for That's not, right. for doing, rather. It's a psychological edge that Adamson is protecting at this point. Adamson still very much in this ball game. 20.2 seconds remaining here. Adamson keeps possession. It's a two-possession ball game here that we have after this time. Oh, and the final four commences today with Ateneo over Adamson or versus Adamson and UE versus UST Falcons. Still breathing. 20 seconds to go. They're behind by four. They have possession. They must make this shot right here. Oh, over two seconds oh. there. Oh, and end one. What a to boot. What an incredible set of play by Coach Leo Austria. He's good at that. I should know. He is really good at baseline inbound situations. And, uh, and he, kept, he gets wow. the ball to Ken Bono at a spot where he doesn't have to even do anything anymore. That's right. So cuts off the time from the clock around two seconds, gets a foul, mm -hmm. which is probably the first intention to get free throws probably. But hey, if you can make a three-point opportunity. That's right. Why not, right? What a smart play by Coach Leo. This game is not over as Doug Kramer, Doug Kramer is out of the ball game. All right. For Ateneo, they have to think about their free throws right now. With a shot clock, or with a game clock rather, down 18.3 seconds. Expect Adamson to go for the steal initially and foul right away just to stop the shot clock and give a little pressure on whoever is fouled to go to the free throw line and shoot some baskets. But, well, Adamson is not yet a team penalty. So right now, you expect Adamson to foul right away. How about Ken Bono, 33 points, nine rebounds. He's making a statement that he is cornering that MVP oh, trophy. Yes. And it's not like uh, it was, oh, the, the shots that he took were easy shots. Majority were contested. And he and that 33 points, Ryan, wala pang siyang in score no second quarter. Huh? Right. Wala siyang in score. Nine in the first half. So you do the math. That's 24 <laughs> points in the second half. Oh, yes. That's the center coach Norman.
Watch out between the half court. Be on one side or the other when you come. The key to this is this. I need a good screen for JC so they'll go. And then you got to come get the basketball, you understand? If not, Jai, I need you to come in. Now, they may switch everything. If they switch everything, remember, they switch everything. Come to the ball. They're going to foul you, guys. Well, for Coach Norman, is putting in all his good free throw shooters. So expect Adamson once again to just fall. I don't know why they are not falling. There you go. Oh, they're trapping. They're forcing. But I think they should. Oh yes, out. that's too much time taken out of the shot clock as Christian was fouled by Mark Agustin with how many seconds was shot? It was that like 11 seconds, 11 seconds. So they have one foul to give. That's the reason why we wondered why. That's right. Why it took so long for Adamson to foul. Ryan, please help me. Well, I, I'm sure they know that they are not getting the penalty. And the... Uh, it is mind-boggling right now why it took the nine seconds to give up that first foul. Nine seconds, that's right. I don't first, think there was a time. Out. First, they were looking for a steal, which is yes. normal. You know, una mga hanapin, right? Yes. But they gave so much space. Well, it was really an attack. Once the ball crosses the okay. half-point mark, that's a time for them to attack, or just a time for them to trap. But right now, I think they have no other alternative. But to quite quickly foul. That's right. They go for the steal first, of course. They might get one, and they'll foul right away. Both oh, teams. Oh, 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 Enough for Adamson to launch a decent shot. It really depends on the ball handler right now. No timeouts for Adamson University. Here we go. Patrick Abal, the man for Adamson University. Four seconds, and he overshoots. Oh, and a foul by Gonzalo, who clothesline Chris Chu. Or brings him down. But Patrick Abao going for the last attempt. What a bizarre series of events, Ryan, starting from that non-foul of Adamson. That's right. That turned That's over by Mario Escalona. Such a risky pass. 9.9 .9 seconds remaining for Adamson to launch a good shot. Take a look at this once again. A cross-court pass trying to give up that lob to Jai Reyes, obviously. A bad decision on the part of Escalona, but on the other side, it's an even worse shot. Two guys challenging his shot, went for that little fall away, did not hit the rim, and now Chris Chu has a chance to give up the a three-point lead, depending on the second free throw. Adamson, once again, has no timeouts left. So Adamson has to heave the ball from the backcourt yes. all the way to the front court. No timeouts for Adamson. It's a three-point lead. Let's see if they're going to throw it. Bono pitches. And that's it. That's it. A, a great gesture by Bono. Oh, yes. Ken Bono. I like that guy. He, he said he raised his hands like, Parang, I tried my best, and then he goes to the Ateneo bench. Kudos to Great, great. And Ken Bono just carried this team oh, today. Yes. Oh, yes. With, even like if they lost. Team. Now remember, these two teams have battled it out three times, and this is the biggest <laughs> margin for, for this two teams. 76-73. Ateneo keeps a 19-game winning streak against Adamson that has stood for nine years. But more importantly, Ryan, they go to the finals. Oh, yes. That's uh, really what they've uh, prayed for, that what they've worked for from the start. Time now for our, the Gillette Vector Plus breakout performance. 
And the other guy running for the MVP plum, JC Enthal with another double-double today. 17 points, 11 rebounds. Could he be the Gillette Vector Plus breakout player of the year 2006? Step up your game with Gillette Vector Plus. Look good, play better. Time now for our Nokia best play of the quarter. And here comes the long tom by Doug Kramer. Triple threat position. He got it. He put it up. The take and make shot from Doug Kramer. He nailed a couple of long shots to pretty much keep Ateneo in this game. And speaking of games, up next is our second Final Four matchup for your Sunday showdown. The USD Growling Tigers and the UE Red Warriors with Eric Devan and Ronnie Maxano. That will do it for this small game. Ateneo propels itself to another finals appearance here in the 69th season of the UAB at the expense of Adamson University for Jamaica De La Cruz, Leah Cruz, Coach Ryan Gregorio, Derek Abit Ramos, I'm Boom Gonzalez. This has been another ABS-CBN Sports presentation. Keep it here for more Final Four action on Studio 23.